Welcome. You are watching, The Time Revival. Today we are looking at the two Moravian missionaries. John Leonard Dober and David Nitschman. This two brethren who were willing to lose everything, just to preach the message of the kingdom to African slaves on the island of St. Thomas and St. Croix in the Danish West Indies. The story begins when Antony was has just been released from slavery comes to Herrnhut, Germany. He narrated the sufferings of the slaves to the Moravian brethren and how countless and countless of them die without knowing Jesus. As the gospel has never reached their shores. One young man, Leonard Dober was so disturbed that he couldn't sleep that night. As he tossed on his bed he struggled to banish from his mind the slaves who were in urgent need of the gospel. After much thought on the matter, Dover was fully convinced that whatever the price it will take for him to preach to the slaves in West Indies he'll do it even if it means he himself to become a slave. When Leonard Dover had finished with his duties as a potter in the settlement of Herrnhut, he went to look for his friend, Tobias Leupold, who after telling him his burden to go to the West Indies with the gospel of Jesus, he just found out that even his friend Tobias Leupold had the same burden. Then they together prayed in the woodland, submitting themselves to the call regardless of whatever the cost they would endure. They started writing letters to the Moravian Assembly, of their plot to go to the West Indies with the Gospel of Jesus. When the, the letter was read, this was considered an mission impossible by many Moravian Assembly. Others critical, suggesting that these young men were merely attention-seeking to the West Indies with the Gospel of Jesus. When the, the letter was read, this was considered an mission impossible by many Moravian assembly. Others critical, suggesting that these young men were merely attention-seeking. But after much determination of these two young men, and seeking counsel from the Lord, for their plea to preach the gospel to the Western Indies, the concluded as impossible this mission is, but however the Lord wants the gospel to also reach the Western Indies. That's when David Nitschman was appointed to replace Tobias Leupold as the two were both still too young but with David Nitschman on the picture the mission was considered reasonable. The two brethren, Leonard Dober and David Nitschman, went on, on their journey after having received the blessing of the congregation at the meeting in Herrnhut on 25 August 7032. After having visited other Christian assemblies in Copenhagen the brethren also withstood their plan of reaching the West Indies slaves with the gospel. As they told them that their mission would only land them in too much trouble. But these two brethren were so firm on their decision, that no suggestion could change their minds. They tried telling them that, firstly, no ship would take them and, secondly, that if they ever did arrive in St. Thomas, they would not survive there. Their hope of preaching the gospel to the slaves was simply considered mission impossible. But Dover answered and said, that they are willing even to become slaves themselves. He and Nitschman concluded that in that way they would be able to reach them in their sorrowful condition and tell them the way of salvation. But this was considered absurd and almost laughable by their friends for no one was ever allowed to become a slave, especially considering the fact that they were whites, so how would they become slaves in Africa? However the reasons that were suggested by their friends did not discourage them. But as for Anthony, the one who told them about the need for the gospel to the slaves, who he himself came from there and had family relatives there, now changed his mind after much persuasion from other believers. He also tried to discourage these two brethren but he failed. After failing, he gave them a letter to give his sister there. Had the intention of these two brethren been merely selfish, they would have been discouraged, as they all the reason to abandon their mission not to mention if it was even possible. They kept encouraging themselves with the script from Numbers 23, verse 19, which says, Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? For what God has started, he shall surely complete it. Finally, when many devout brethren saw the unquenchable fire to go to the West Indies for the sake of the gospel, they decided to help in any way possible that could make their mission possible. The queen from the royal court also became aware of their mission and encouraged, some financial help was also released to them. 
Mr. Conrad Friedrich, an officer of the royal court, found a Dutch ship on which they would be able to work as carpenters on the voyage to St. Thomas. Finally their dream of preaching to the slaves was coming together, you should have seen their joy, as though the mission was something too easy and enjoyable. Officer Martin not only succeeded in gaining permission for the men to take along their belongings, with no payment for livelihood, he even supplied these two men with the tools they so badly needed. This opportunity made them very grateful to God. On 8 October 7032, they went on board to sail for West Indies. As the ship pulled away from the docks, it is said that they called out to their loved and church friends, saying, May the Lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering. This act of love for the lost souls inspired many of the people of Moravian. By them saying, that may the Lamb that was slain receive his reward, it was their way of honoring and appreciating the sinless Lamb that was slain for our sake. They asked themselves if Jesus offered himself willingly for us while we were still sinners, wouldn't we honor the Lamb by going to the lost souls and tell them this wonderful news? As they boarded the ship, for nine weeks they were tossed about on a stormy ocean until at last the yellowing rocks and low green hills of St. Thomas came into view. While on the way, some of the people who were on the ship them, narrated to the them the sufferings and the hunger that would come to them if they do not abandon their journey, more worse even the diseases that might kill them. Instead of worrying about all that, they only thought of how they could find a soul for Christ aboard the ship. Their plan on being slaves wasn't exactly successful as they were given a house to stay in, in a little mud hut, as soon as they arrived in St. Thomas. It seemed that some of the Moravian brethren had already asked for some favors for someone to house them and see that they go on with their mission. The two brethren worked very hard and endured all hardship. They did not waste much time. The first Sunday they arrived, they had already started the work of God. At first it was difficult to fit in, but as soon as they did, the slaves responded pleasantly to their message, even though they mixed the German and Dutch languages in what they said to them but the people still understood them. Accepting their talk as a message which heaven sent them, they rejoiced, clapping hands. Perhaps what must have inspired the West Indies slaves was that these people were willing to abandon everything just so they could preach the gospel to them. Gradually and graduation the people were being pulled out of darkness into the glorious light of the gospel. For three months Nichman toiled with the young man but after three months he saw that Leonard had settled into the work, so he left Leonard alone and sailed back to Europe. But the young man being his first initiative to come there wasn't doesn't discouraged, he stayed there for four years laboring and preaching the message of the kingdom. When Leonard Dover was recalled by his church four years later, he had already won 13,000 souls into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah! Glory be to the name of God!